Growing up, my mom always loved talking to me about her childhood, and it was something I loved to hear about. Not because of the life lessons she learned or the time she got in trouble at school, but it was because of the stories that come with how some of the major historical events tie in with her life. My mom has always been open with telling me about things that happened in her life when she was younger, but I believe the most important one that stood out to me was her encounter with Richard Ramirez. Richard Ramirez, also known as the Night Stalker, was always very quiet and seemed to always be in his own world. He never really had friends and would just do things his own way. He grew up in El Paso, Texas and was born on February 29, 1960. He was my mom's neighbor in El Paso when she was living in her childhood home. He never went out to play with the kids on the block. He rather observed them while he sat on the porch of his house. Sometimes he would go on walks by himself but yet still stare at the people who caught his eye and wouldn't stop staring until he could no longer see them. He had this energy with him that seemed very uncomfortable to people, but they never really said anything because it seemed disrespectful. There was this one time when my aunt was walking home from school and passed by some trailers where he used to hang out. When she was walking, he noticed her and decided to hide behind one of those trailers. He then grabbed her at the right moment and she started to scream. The whole block could hear her scream. My uncles came out of the house and started running towards her. They noticed it was Richard and beat him up. They told him to never mess with our family again or he'd regret it. Since that moment, he never bothered my family again, but he still stared with his gleamy eyes. When he was living in El Paso, he started raping and eventually moved to California to sneak into people's homes and kill them when they were sleeping. He didn't care who he killed, he just enjoyed the adrenaline that went through him. He was then nicknamed the Night Stalker and murdered 13 people who were killed between June 1984 and August 1985. He got away with this for a very long time and was eventually caught on August 31st, 1985. The reason he got caught was because someone had noticed his face in a drawing that had gone around of what one of his surviving victims thought he looked like. People started to chase him down the street, planning on beating him up, and one of those people being my dad and my uncle. He was killing around the neighborhood my dad lived in when he was growing up in California. He was then convicted on September 20th, 1989 of all charges, 13 counts of murder, 5 attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. On November 7, 1989, he was sentenced to die in California's gas chamber, but ended up dying on his own from cancer. This man had not only impacted all his victims and their families, but my own family as well. As fate would have it, my family would encounter him again.